truth. Bring it on. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Do you want the whole truth? I don't think you're ready. Governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. It's Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Welcome back. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. AFR Talk proudly on. AFR Talk, lock it in. Right now, we're going to go directly to our guest. He is a New York Times bestselling author. His latest book, Spin Masters, How the Media Ignored the Real News and Helped Reelect Barack Obama. G. Crane, do you think you should have this guest on because a lot more because of the fact that you cover that a lot and he has a lot of good information in regard to that. He knows President Obama very well because he's written two other books and The Case Against Barack Obama in 2008 and Gangster Government, not Gangsta Government, Gangster Government in 2011. He is the new conservative intelligence briefing editor and a Washington Times, Washington, oh, excuse me, Washington Examiner. I didn't say Washington Post. Washington Examiner columnist, and he joins us now, David Ferdoso. Hey, buddy, how are you? Hey, doing great, Crane. Thanks for having me. Uh, as I said, in, in contacting you tonight, I thought, wow, if people are showing up uh, a, a contest between Vladimir Putin and President Obama and President Obama's playing checkers and Putin's playing chess. You've written a great deal about how President Obama operates and what he measures, how he measures victory and defeat and how he goes about that. Today's New York Times column by Vladimir Putin did, even with the contradictions, even more than President Obama's speech on Tuesday night, did Putin win this overall exchange when it comes to power in the world and the issue of Syria? Well, I, I certainly think so. I mean, now, look, just to offer you a, a, a caveat, um, mm -hmm. I think that intervention in Syria would be a, a, a tremendous mistake. And so in a way, I'm not that disappointed or upset by any of this, but it's quite incredible to uh, see how badly our president, I mean, he's our president, so we have a stake in his, you know, being respected worldwide and all that. Um, it's, it's really kind of, uh, uh, you know, it, it's disappointing to see how badly he's been outdone in diplomacy here, how um, all of this saber-rattling uh, to go into Syria has probably weakened him to the point where um, we're now going to take a very bad deal where, where we're actually invested in Assad's regime and keeping him in power so that we can get all of the chemical weapons out of there, because that's going to take a lot more time than people realize. I mean, you know, we signed the Chemical Weapons Treaty in 1992, the United States, and we still haven't destroyed all of our chemical weapons. So the idea of going into the middle of a civil war and extracting a bunch of chemical weapons from various locations throughout Syria, um, well, it's, you know, this isn't something that's very practical, but somehow Putin has sold him on this because we didn't have any other option, because Obama ran into a wall where Congress didn't want the war, Putin didn't want the war. Everybody else didn't want the war. And, uh, you know, this is what happens when you make threats you can't really follow through on. Okay, but he's been very successful. I obviously disagree with his agenda and speak out yeah. on the policies. We all want him to succeed. I, I'm glad you put that in there in the sense of being president. He's our president, twice elected, right. and he seems to understand the political game. Divide, conquer, promise some goodies, and, and you got it. But when it comes to foreign policy, he seems to be either naive or is he getting exactly what he wants? That's been also mentioned to say, yeah, he's getting exactly what he wants. He doesn't want the U.S. to be the leader of the free world. He's not comfortable with that. Your thoughts? Well, you know, I, I'm not convinced. I've heard people uh, articulate that philosophy before. I don't think that's the case with Obama. I don't think that he has a 
Uh, I don't think that he is anti-American. I think that he's really just kind of incompetent when it comes to these things. I think that uh, he's out of his league here and that Putin has just kind of owned him. Um, that's that's the way that I see all this, at least. Okay, but tactically, and, and, and understand, I, I, there are those who don't want the U.S. to be leader of the free world, and they're not necessarily anti-American. I, I hope it's not coming out that way because they just believe— uh, I think they're tremendously misguided, and it does hurt America if we're not the leader of the free world. But they believe that all countries it should be balanced, and we shouldn't be the ones. There shouldn't be one country dictating to others in any way or setting the agenda. And they're uncomfortable with that multiculturalism. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't least say with this Syria question that you know we have to decide: do we want to be the world's sole enforcer? of international norms uh, when it comes to things like chemical weapons. And um, Obama's answer to that question has been, yes, we should be. Uh, I think most Americans uh, have, didn't believe that that's not, that, that, you know, that that's not good, that we shouldn't do that. And, and um, Does he really you know, believe Obama, it, though, David? Not to interrupt, pardon me. he realized how yeah. little support he had internationally, decided that he had to go to Congress with this to try to share the blame for starting another war. And... When Congress, it became clear that, first of all, the, the U.K. Parliament, I think, was the decisive moment here when the Parliament voted against war. And then he went to Congress, and it became very clear that Congress was going to vote against war. And now we're in this situation where we're going to be forced to take it. Look, and, you know, like I said, I don't think Syria intervention is a good idea. But Assad is a really horrible human being. And, uh, you know, what he has done is awful. And the idea that now all of a sudden we're going to have to accept basically this deal on whatever terms he wants, uh, you know, this is, this is what happens when you play the game wrong. And President Obama now has to pay the consequences. And, you know, it's not just me. I mean, the New York Times uh, in its coverage of this is pretty much saying, yeah, it looks like Putin got the better of Obama. Right. But I get the idea that if chemical weapons were, it was about that, he would have brought it up much earlier because there was evidence even, I believe, last year and the end of last year. And the other part to that is in, in April and then either late April, or early May, he could have done this a lot earlier. And listen, I'm not, you know, I'm not a conspiracy guy at all. I'm just saying that I find it, I'm curious why he took issue with it at this time after it was pointed out that he drew the red line. And there's right. been speculation to say, hey, you know what? He's doing that because it's about him and his ego and not necessarily the enforcement of international law. Your thoughts? You know, that? whether it's about him or not, um, you know, ultimately, I, the earlier uses, there was a lot more doubt. It was a lot smaller. This was a very large attack. And I, I do think that uh, Obama felt like, oh, we, we need to respond somehow. Just the, the problem I have here is that, you know, I, I think that a lot of Americans share these concerns. Is yes. that the opposition to Assad is not the sort of group of people that we want to be supporting? I mean, here we have people that range from kind of Muslim Brotherhood Islamists to the really radical Al Qaeda, you know, openly aligned with Al Qaeda type Islamists. Um, and there's a, also a like third a choice in there, though, situation. David. I mean, there's another. There's also people. There's a third choice, so to speak, and there are ways to get that. No, I I, I hear you on. Pretty much everything you're, you, what you've said, and I, I just want to clarify. By the way, can you stick with us just on the flip side of the break for just a few more minutes? Yeah, sure, that'd be fine. That, that'd be great because the question I'm going to ask you is to clarify. What you're saying is, hey, President Obama was genuine. He said, "Look, I don't like these weapons being used. They need we we need as an internationalist in the sense of the belief of the international law and following that, this broke the major rule and it will cause chaos." So he was genuine in getting that support. And bottom line, he just got outgamed on the world stage in how to get that done. I'll ask you that on the flip side of the break and more. David Ferdoso, our guest, Washington Examiner, Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, AFR Talks.